Now we're ready to look at the structure of the autonomic nervous system. We're going to begin by comparing it to what you already know about or somatic. So this picture is somatic. So this is from chapter 14. You already know this picture. Remember you have two motor neurons. You have the upper motor neuron This one would start from the motor cortex of the frontal lobe. It crosses over. So remember the right and left sides of the body are connected to the opposite side of the brain. Then it goes here to the anterior horn of the spine. There it synapses with the lower motor neuron. And then the axon goes out through the anterior root to your skeletal muscle. So the basic setup of motor commands is an upper motor neuron from the brain to the spine. It synapses with a lower motor neuron that goes from the spine to the effector. So you have the upper is brain to spine, and then you have the lower is spine to effector. Notice also that the cell bodies are all within the CNS. There's no cell bodies out in the PNS. Okay, now that's for motor. You do have sensory cell bodies in the PNS, but not motor. And that is for motor somatic. Now we can compare this to the autonomic motor. So here's our picture of autonomic note motor. Now this picture left the brain out, so let's draw a brain in here. So here's a brain. So you're still going to have that cell body starting from somewhere in the brain. It's not going to be a cerebral cortex, though. It's going to be a subconscious part of the brain. It's going to come down and cross over and go into the spine. So here we have an upper motor neuron. It's going to have its cell body in a subconscious part of the brain. And that could be such as the hypothalamus or the medulla oblongata would be a couple of examples. It comes down here to the lateral horn of the spine. Then we synapse. Notice here we have two lower motor neurons. So here we have a synapse. Here's our cell body. And this is what's going to receive neurotransmitter from the upper. Okay, then its axon is going to go through the anterior root. And to a ganglion. So here we have a ganglion. So this does have a cell body out in the PNS. Then we have a second lower motor neuron. This one has its cell body in the ganglion. Where it receives neurotransmitter 
from the previous one. And then its axon goes to the effector. And since this is autonomic, the effector is either going to be cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, or a gland. So we need to name these two lower motor neurons. So here we have two lower motor neurons. And we're going to name them for their relationship to the ganglion. So this first one here, the brown one, its cell body is before the ganglion. So this is the preganglionic neuron. And sometimes instead of talking about a whole neuron, we just talk about an axon. So its axon is called the preganglionic axon. The blue one has its cell body in the ganglion, so it is called the ganglionic neuron. But we don't af often actually talk about a ganglionic neuron. We usually just talk about its axon, and its axon is after the ganglion, so it is called a postganglionic axon. This is the term we're going to use the most, so I'll put an asterisk there. In the remainder of the chapter, you're going to hear a lot about postganglionic axon. That's the one that goes from the ganglion to the effector and secretes neurotransmitter on the effector. So there's the basics of how autonomic is set up. You have one upper motor neuron from the brain to the spine, then you have two lower motor neurons to get from the spine to the effector with a ganglion where they two lower motor neurons synapse.